Hello, Internet. Uh, I am a white man with free time, so that means I'm starting a podcast. Uh, I have no idea what this is or where it's going, but for now, I like the idea of calling it uh, Creative Critique because I'm a very creative person and I enjoy critiquing things. Again, not super original for the Internet, but here we are. Uh, if rambling's a direction, that's the direction it's going to go in always. So always. That's a direction, right? It's not just running <laughs> in circles. An, it's an aimless forever direction. Uh, I am Spencer Wayne, and I draw and write, and I love movies. I have uh, a webcomic that I've kind of abandoned, and uh, I've got some stuff on the horizon. Right now I do graphic design and illustration. But uh, I love editing. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of things, uh, a lot of movies and TV shows where after I finish watching it, I think to myself of the ways I would change it or strengthen the story or vice versa, how good the writing was to uh, bring about the conclusion, yada, yada, yada. That's what I'm all about. And now I'm here with my brother, Hudson. Hello, I am Hudson Wayne. Um, for those of you who need a visual distinction, since we were about, I want to say, maybe four and six, people thought we were the same person. So I'm the person with stubble and dirty blonde hair and weirder glasses, blue eyes, and he is the one with brown eyes and black hair and generally looks more normal, not a massive nose. Um, and actually takes time to cater to his facial hair with a goatee. I just kind of let it all hang out. So uh, background, we're the kind of family that has IMDb open when we watch films, and that's just the appetizer. Mm. Uh, philosophical discussion will follow. Usually. Um, I'd say I learned more about ethics from family movie nights than school, so food for thought. Um, as for myself, I guess I should get that out of the way. I am an inspiring game designer, and I've been playing video games since I was, let's say, three or four. I've been wanting to make a game since I was 10, and I haven't gotten there yet, but I ended up making a board game. Coincidentally, this first episode of Untitled Podcast is brought to you by uh, Business Party. The, the board game for people who love Monopoly, but also hate Monopoly. Yes. If you love Monopoly and you don't want it to take five hours and you want to be more mean to your friends, then I highly recommend Business Party because that will be the game for you. You can end friendships in 30 minutes or less, guaranteed, or your money back. Would you say that's your unbiased opinion? Uh, Let's go 75% yes on that, that because... I'm very turbulent, and I'm very critical of my own work. So, yes, seventy-five percent. Hey, um, I kind of, I kind of avoiding describing me fully. Um, I also do graphic design. I'm learning how to do pixel art. I'm one of those crazies that draws a sketch first and then pixels on top of it. That was a fun COVID project, but you gotta. I feel like that's just how you should do it. Well, some uh, pixel art is still just art. Well, it depends on where who you talk to. If you talk to some people, some people will insist that you do it pixel by pixel with no quote unquote cheating. So oh. you can't even make dithers using automation in Photoshop. Now we're talking every pixel placed lovingly by hand, and I mean, you know, it produces sound results. Don't get me wrong, but I like it to not take a month per piece. So yeah. that's what I do. Um, I also dabble in writing quite a bit. I wrote one of your scripts a long time ago, back when we filmed a weird project. Oh, was that uh, the the youth group um, TV show thing that I tried to make? Yeah, we were totally not doing a riff on Studio 60 mm. with the same character archetypes. No, it was totally different. <laughs> and You're... Uh... You're, you're doing much better for looking at the camera. You, you should oh. stop looking at the camera and look at me. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> you know. Whoever... I, I, I set up the camera and I immediately forgot about it. Yeah. <laughs> whoever is more interesting in the moment-to-moment -moment basis, I guess. Rude. So, um... Yeah, just for the full background, we're church kids and uh, we've... Tech has always been a big part of uh, our 
family and growing up and uh i've always had a, a filmmaker bent uh leaning kind of out of that now but uh we did attempt to make like a 22 minute pilot with 13 year olds at our church once and i poured my heart and soul in that thing and i hated that project when it was done but you did you did help me write it which i do appreciate yeah that was like my first foray into screenplay and i mean i haven't i don't have any official schooling or training but it's always been a habit of mine when i'm watching movies to think about what characters would say in general and Mm -hmm. that's kind of an acting thing but i think that's where acting and writing cross over generally so um yeah i i do writing i do i do a bit of art i mostly talk about game design and i'm more i'm a thousand times more critical of video games than i am of films Mm -hmm. Because films are not an interactive experience unless you want to consider waiting in line for popcorn. Rocky Horror Picture Show. And finding the perfect seat interactivity. I guess a Rocky Horror isn't really interactivity, is it? It's just disruption. Um, Yeah, I mean, it's a bit of both because if the film wants you to just get up and dance and everyone's doing it and they can all see the screen, that's socially acceptable. Mm. But if you're the only one dancing and you're dancing to the person in front of you, to make them mad mm. that would generally be frowned upon probably Who anyways knows? uh to get the conversation rolling today uh i wanted to start uh talk about the bob's burgers movie um i ha- especially with the the movie being announced i was warming up to the show i've only seen a couple episodes but i really like what i've seen uh it's got a very unique sense of humor i don't have to sell bob's burgers to you because i guarantee you've seen bob's burgers rather than this podcast but uh um i just saw the movie yesterday i regret not seeing it in theaters but after watching it i kind of didn't i was not that not that it was bad but i i i didn't feel like it needed I didn't feel like the story was a theatrical story. I felt like it was uh, an episode of the show. For two we, hours, for approximately. Two hours. Or, yeah. Well, this is weird because, like, through pure coincidence, we've both seen this film as of literally yesterday night, so we're both fresh. Exactly. That's really weird. But um, my end of things is that my fiancé got me into the show and she loves it. It took me a while, but I'm. it's getting a laugh out of me pretty consistently. Oh, absolutely. And we just wanted to watch the movie. So just go for it, sit down, uh, give it a watch. And I kind of walked out of it saying, this is stupid. But I walked out of it saying, this is stupid in a way where <laughs> it was really great. <laughs> and Stupid as a compliment, not as a pejorative. I think as I get older... Uh, the more I try to be smart with every facet of my life, the more I'm disappointed. The more I try to be stupid and allow stupid things to come into my life, the happier I am. Well, I mean, you, you applying critical thinky brain to everything is just a great way to ruin every experience ever. Oh, yeah. None of my friends or family members have ever told me this in the entirety of my lifetime. They all think I'm a very kind and heartwarming person that only gives words of encouragement. <laughs> You are a kind and heartwarming person. <laughs> it just sometimes you have a lot of opinions about it. Sometimes the thing that's warming the heart is Hell's Inferno, so um, take that for what you will. But Bob's Burgers. Yeah. Um, so yeah, can I can I rant about the movie a little bit? You you've this is a rant that I gave you on the car ride over here. Already, yeah, you but. you go first. Um, uh, a few things. One, I don't think it needed to be a musical, but I liked the songs. I feel like it should have been more music or just been a movie. I feel like there wasn't enough music in it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, building off of that, I also think it was kind of a 
not a great idea to make it a musical because like there's a lot of funny people in this movie but the villain song i'm not gonna i at some point we'll give a spoiler warning i'm not gonna spoil anything yet but uh the the villain song that guy can't sing yeah i I think it was not pleasant to listen to i can definitely attest to that i just think like if you're if you're looking at it in more broad strokes the whole show is definitely absurdist humor and yeah the current trend of absurdist humor is kind of just latching on to cringe. <laughs> and then cringe is the exact equivalent of the guy who puts a piece of gum on the art museum wall. And then half the people say, this is art. I'll pay thousands of dollars to see it and more to buy it. And then the other half of the people go, this is stupid. It's a piece of gum on the wall. And I mean, you can't really draw the line between, is this just pure cringe or is it not because I'm still laughing a little bit because it's so bad? I don't like. Uh, I I hear what you're saying. Uh, I don't. I don't know if I would. That sounds like a very harsh uh, thing to say about Bob's Burgers. Like I I agree that like there's definitely some cringe humor in there, but I I would describe it more as like it's very relatable humor. Well, I was in that case talking more just about that song specifically of course course. the song is just cringe but i was laughing because it was so stilted and disjointed and then other people were talking and Mm. like having objections and whenever a character singing in a musical they're always just letting it all out and nobody's telling them that they're wrong and then these guys were like hey wait a minute no that's bad don't do that yep shut up this plan won't work what are you doing and it's like i am laughing like it's okay. again it's stupid but i'm laughing you are also in a better position because you saw this movie with someone else i was watching it on my own and mm. you always have a better avenue to laughter when you see something with a group of people so that's yeah. on me but um uh the the other thing that bothered me about this movie was uh the the plot didn't feed into itself very well like first of all it's uh a a tv show going to a movie and it kept a tv show kind of plot i don't need them to go like globe trotting or like the simpsons movie i don't need like the fbi to put a dome over the town but um they never left their block Mm -hmm. uh and the stakes weren't very high no I feel like it needed to be pushed for a theatrical story. And, uh, the, uh, so, so the, the plot of the movie is, uh, a big hole in front of the, the restaurant. So you have tension on the family. They can't make money. They already owe money to the bank and they're under that crunch. And then there's a sinkhole and no one can come in and buy Burgers. And then they have 10 days or whatever to yeah, and pay the bank loan or they're going to get clock. evicted. Uh, and then uh, on top of that, there's a body that's found in the hole. And then it, the thing becomes a murder mystery. Yeah. And then the plots that are added on top of that are uh, Louise is called, the youngest sibling is called a baby at school. And then her goal for the movie is I have to prove that I'm brave. And like, that's the only part of the movie that really matters because the other two siblings have very personal, like joke arcs. Yeah. Nothing that like comes to a big, uh, conclusion in the climax nothing that really builds or changes them no and it never the the money stuff is for bob and linda and that never really connects with the murder mystery the only reason they're all there at the end is because of a plot contrivance where they like fall into the murder mystery plot if it weren't for that they would be totally separate yeah, the script basically makes sure that they're in the same location where everybody else is, and then at the end of the movie, they accidentally find their way there, and yeah. then everybody's together again, and then... 
And it's not that it drew me out of the movie while watching it. It was just that the there's a animation uh escalation for the movie and like uh the soundtrack and like everyone's telling great jokes and like there's so many things that are on a movie level except for the plot and the writing it really felt like this was an episode or maybe a two-part episode with a few additional like jokes instead of a movie and it, it just I, at the end i i was just sitting there and i i felt like i wasn't in on the joke yeah i um i feel like maybe watching the show and being somewhat familiar with with it is mm-hmm. helpful in a very general sense but I would say the film, for the most part, explains things enough for you to understand just mm. who this character is, yep. what they want, what their personality type is. And I think, especially with absurdist humor, jokes are either going to land and they're going to be the funniest thing in the world or they're just going to flop and you're not going to get it. And then getting it is just whether or not your brain finds that logic malfunction amusing or not. Um, as a very logic oriented individual, the the <laughs> twist of that you don't say is that um, you find a logical thing is more funny in a pretense. So then you like the absurdist and stupid things more mm. because just ah that's illogical and it's like really that's all it takes brain and then <laughs> sure enough yeah. you know. Oh, you know, I made a banana split with plantains. It's like, ha, ha, ha. Yep, that's all it takes. So mm. I feel like there is no joke to get. I feel like it's... Well, no, no, no. You're you're taking me a little bit more literally than I intended. I, like, uh, it's not that uh, I got to the end of the movie and I didn't find it funny. Uh, like, I was in on the joke of the, the humor of the movie, but it just... Um, the story left me feeling like something was missing. Um, like I got to the end yeah. and it just felt like, well, where was Bob's story? Because we're trying to make money and then we have the 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 street uh, food cart and then we have a chase scene and it's just like, so where's the rest? Yeah, I, I guess is more what I'm saying. I think if I had to pick it apart from a screenplay perspective and just looking at tropes, I think maybe the reason that um, the adult belchers were not present and included with the kids sooner is because the film may or may not be trying to do a misdirect with its whodunit. Um, and so it keeps them separate to have two plot lines going saying, oh, it could be somebody from it either one of Bob these plot lines. Linda? No, the all the carnies that are chasing them and oh well no 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 the they okay we're I'm just gonna put up the spoiler warning at this yeah. point but like uh, the 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 middle song is uh, Louise at a uh, carney carniopolis yeah carney Car- where they all live together. where they all live where they're like no none of us did it yeah. And like, I mean, it, for actual murder mystery, that's not great evidence. But I mean, for for a movie, it came like pretty conclusively like it's not any of the carnies. Well, I would say yes. But then as soon as the song is over, the three kids are like, oh, wow, carnies are dumb. And so <laughs> you're just left with, well, maybe one of them did it or not. <laughs> they, they, yeah, they are played for a lot of like simple minded jokes. Um, I'm not going to lie. I called it was the lawyer pretty early on. Yeah. Because again, they always get you to focus on the first suspect and some smart stories will make it actually the first suspect. But this one said, oh, it's the mayor's brother. And we're like, no, this is too early into the movie. If they reveal who did it earlier than you have an hour left to go it's never that person so then i was like well it's the lawyer because the lawyer is the only one who had the motive and the the capability to do it and get away with it 
See, I I went into this. I I waited too long to watch the movie. I got I got spoiled for who the the murderer was. Oh, before, that's fair. Uh, before I saw it, but um, it I I need to back up for a second. I I don't know the show this well. Is is Mr. Fishoder the mayor? The the guy with Calvin uh, Calvin or Kevin Klein Kevin, Kevin Klein. <laughs> Maybe where is it? Who knows? Um, yeah, he's he's the mayor, and then he's, the mayor. he's also um, Bob's no, the landlord. landlord. I just assumed he was a rich guy who owned the street. I didn't know he was the mayor. Um, yeah, he owns the whole the wharf. Yeah, the wharf with all the amusement rides. Yeah, um, and then yeah, his brother is just a guy who yeah. is there, and they're a rich family. Lots well, yeah. of jokes about that. And there, then, he's there to get easy like arrested development like oh i want a champagne dolphin golf cart yeah whatever um i will give them credit though i'm pretty sure the lawyer is on the show and he's a recurring character and they didn't do that awful trope where they invent a new character for the movie to have them be the bad guy uh who done it there's a few compilations on youtube the lawyer has like a grand total of like six minutes yeah. He's in one episode in season nine and one episode in season 11. Yeah. It's better than nothing, I guess. No, no, no. I, I appreciate It's not uh, Clone High. It's not um, <laughs> Ponce de Leon. Oh, it's my. It's your Ponce's pants. Ponce's yep. pants. I, I tried to get um, my fiance Kara, into that show. It did not work. <laughs> um She's just too good of a person to invo- enjoy dark humor the way I do, so it's my bad. You're telling me she didn't like the Nork? And... Uh, how many episodes did she make it through of, of uh, Clone High? I want to say six. I tried to sell her on... Oh, hey! um, Joan of Arc is voiced by the same voice actress that voices Shigo in Kim Possible. Yeah. You like Kim Possible. Yeah. You'll like Clone High. <laughs> it's the same art style as Tom- Total Drama Island, which you also like and it's kind of yeah and then it's like it, just give it a try and then no because again you know um if you look at memes of our personality types in our relationship online it'll say that she's a literal care bear and i am a literal demon so <sighs> that explains why Yikes. um the dark humor doesn't always work it, it's my fault kara it's you because found a personality test that called you a demon uh just a meme not <laughs> If I find a personality test that calls me a demon, the closest thing I did was I, I did a personality test to find out which circle of hell I would belong in, and I got all the way to the bottom. Mm. You know, so good moment there. Um, <laughs> wow. Anyway, yeah, like, I um, I think the Bob's Burgers movie wanted to be a whodunit, and it just made the classical fallacy of not introducing enough suspects. Mm, yeah, I because a little bit yeah you're not gonna sell me that one of the belchers is the murderer God, no. i thought that's what you're trying to say for a second i was like no you know not, you're not you're happening. not gonna sell me on that their but main I character i never got the intonation that the inclination that the movie was trying to do that i know and it's... again uh, just another reason i think this was a 22 minute plot i don't think this was a 90 minute plot yeah and i think that's what's difficult is that if you're making a serialized show with a fixed format and you're suddenly asked to expand that format by you know approximately six times as much yeah um it doesn't just happen like magic overnight and movies rely a lot more on emotional resonance resonance and character arcs in order to sell their ideas Mm -hmm. because that's what people want to see when they sit in a very dark room and they have a very big bucket of popcorn they don't want to be just entertained they want to be thrilled when they're coming home after work to watch a tv show they only usually want to be entertained but if you want to be entertained and thrilled when you come home from work there's always game of thrones seasons one to seven can't speak for eight but it's hard and i think specifically when you Mm -hmm. look at comedy as a genre in film comedy is the lowest stakes genre that exists out there it needs to be if comedy uh in a vacuum is low stakes absolutely yeah but like uh a good comedy movie has 
a very deep core that keeps it running like uh planes trains and automobiles um i was actually just thinking of that too this happens a lot for those of you at home that aren't aware we don't have twin brain but we do have yeah uh sibling uh psychosis <laughs> yeah i was thinking of that exact same movie and i was just about to say um if you're talking about john hughes um like comedy in a vacuum has no stakes and i was going to assert that i believe comedy needs to be tethered to another genre in order to yep. have higher stakes and it's one of the few genres that needs that where it's not that it doesn't stand on its own it's that it's it harder elevated. to thrill people with a comedy and mm -hmm. i think planes trains and automobiles works as a movie that you would see in the theater because it's comedy tied to some drama because yep. john hughes is a master class example of dramedy because yep. he's yep. able to sell you on tougher ideas and concepts by not masking them with humor but filtering them through the lens of humor and yeah like it's a funny movie and then it has serious heartfelt moments as well and it's a perfect balance mm. and i think maybe the bob's burgers movie is just like instead of being a 50 50 it's like a 75 percent comedy 80 yeah. percent comedy there's one scene where they're all gonna die i and, and like uh i want to wrap this up just uh by talking about the great stuff about the movie because there is a lot of great stuff and what you're talking about like the I, I I looked it up briefly and apparently it's like a thing that they don't they haven't mentioned uh, Bob's mother the the kid's paternal grandmother oh yes that is correct they've um, they've never mentioned that before I, I I'm at a loss there but like the stuff with them confiding to Louise like the movie's not without an emotional core and it's simple but i like it a lot like the big draw for me to watch the show at all was because these are characters that actually like each other yeah like it's, they're a really good family unit like in that they are loving real people who accept each other like then get on each other's nerves and comedy ensues but they're not family guy <laughs> Well, they're, they're real people. I think what you mean is just that we're too used in, to in fiction in outside of a family oriented sitcom seeing examples of dysfunctional families being too literal where you wonder why they still exist yeah. as a family unit at all yeah. and having a show where it's pretty believable that they still do care about each other yeah. is, I want to say more rare because yeah very you have shows like family guy where the family is less a family and more a vehicle for Absolutely. more comedic opportunities and it just comes at the cost of these guys hate each other well yeah a like a lot like with uh i mean i agree with you 100 percent. i i will always take a a loving family thing over like oh like shut up meg like not to talk shit on family guy although i will uh they're when they want to be funny they're really fucking funny and uh oh i guess this is a rated r podcast I'm yeah so probably um uh I, when they tell a good joke it's a it's a good joke but they don't have a good like they are humor with no emotional core when they bring up like oh i love my family like it, it's just to lead to a joke there's never any actual substance there. man that that sounded more like how south park did peter griffin's voice than peter <laughs> griffin's voice <laughs> do you remember the time i got tacos with osama bin laden um and, and again like uh, i i'm not here to i i couldn't write family guy i i don't understand the the pressures of writing a show that's been on the air for for 20 years and these are just my opinions but uh like i will watch family guy for a joke but i am actually very sold on bob's burgers like watching the entire series it has very much won me over yeah like if i think if i wanted to be fair to all parties i would say that 
Family Guy is not my cup of tea. It gets laughs out of me in earlier seasons more than later, but I think it's undeniable that Seth MacFarlane is an extremely talented voice actor. His sense of comedic timing is impeccable. Yes. You know, yes. and he obviously knows how to be funny. Oh, yeah. And his voice is amazing. Yeah. And I think it's just voice. trying to make the same show funny mm-hmm. for more than 10 seasons. We expect yeah. it to keep churning out funny. Mm-hmm. And the reality is, is people will get tired of whatever, no matter how much of a passion project it is. And that's just part of creating anything. It doesn't even have to be a TV show. But yeah. I oh, think I think with like the Bob's Burgers movie, I I feel like it is closer to being an episode of the show. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it is disjointed and it wants to be a whodunit. It doesn't commit fully to the premise and characters. There's more static characters than non. And I, mm-hmm. I mean, you could, you could almost assert that all the characters in the film are more or less static characters. But I think like when you approach critical thinking and everything, you, you tend to undervalue just the entertainment part when you're not thrilled yes and now that i'm 30 i'm going i am delighted to be entertained and Mm -hmm. the jokes were funny the songs were funny it didn't make sense and ultimately i think a film needs to do a lot worse to get a a failing grade from me oh yeah no no uh i just thought it was conversation worthy uh uh I was very entertained by the Bob's Burgers movie, and while I do have, like, a critical issues with it, I would gladly watch it again. It was funny. Um, uh, there's a lot of stuff that I don't quite understand, but uh, it was it was still like a great time. And the the Lucky Ducks song is very catchy. It is yeah. still stuck in my head, and I really like Linda. Yeah, it's like, uh, and uh, I like. Um, I, I like just the the general like positivity vibes and again like the, the family that loves each other. It's like I know you droopy Bob right now. You just gotta you just gotta punch him in the nuts. It's like a metaphor. It's like not when you do it. Yeah. It it so much to love about that movie. I just wanted it to be better. I I, I wanted uh I wanted to be thrilled. I was thoroughly entertained. Yeah. But I was expecting to be thrilled. Yeah, and I think um you know, like, if the show is continuing, I'm not sure. I would assume so. Um, I would be happy to see their second go at a movie in the theater for sure. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, I think the other thing that I just remembered now is that if this movie was affected by COVID in any way, which I have no idea, you know, that just sucks to suck. So <laughs> um, there's a lot of stuff where it just kind of got held back. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, what can you do? What can so, you do? Yeah. What can you do? <sighs> no, uh, uh, I, I would assume that it was at least a little bit disrupted by COVID. Yeah. Um, and a sequel would be intriguing, and I would... Uh, I would also watch a sequel, but uh, the film did not make back all of its money yet. So, oh shoot, That's yeah, good. it's it's actually a crying shame. It's the first two uh, D animated film to be released in theaters since oh. two thousand nine, I think. Well, that's uh, maybe twenty eleven. That's rough. Like, I am a huge advocate for two D animation, and I think mm-hmm. if you wanted to be um, completely aware. The show is made with Toon Boom Studio. Yeah. It's not hand animation, which, as we know, is very, very painstaking compared to using the computer to assist you. I believe Toon Boom is the same um, program that Rick and Morty uses. Interesting. Well, enough, yeah, it's but... it's uh, rigged puppet animation. I don't, I don't know if it's a Toon Boom, but uh, yeah, the same. But that being said, as somebody who's dabbled in animation, even when the computer is helping you, it still takes so much more time yeah. than just grabbing a camera and filming it. Like, yeah. It cannot be understated. So, No. Uh, and that's another way that the movie like was very much elevated for a theatrical release. The animation was great. Yeah. 
It felt right. like a step up. And especially, like, that's one thing where I feel like it did justify being a musical yeah. is having them like dancing and moving and looking like so good uh was very much worth yeah. the theatrical uh work mm-hmm. but yeah um i think that's i think that's uh all that i got to say about bob's burgers any 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 closing thoughts um if you care about the website personalitydatabase.com where everybody tries to analyze fictional characters based on the myers-briggs personality (laughs) test you should note that the character louise shares the same personality type as me the entp no way really and i will i tried to deny this for me the first two minutes like nope same way of thinking same humor we just watched in an episode where they they all go on a cruise ship and everybody else is fantasizing about uh reenacting titanic moments and then louise is fantasizing about laughing while the titanic sinks and i'm like crap i laughed at that (laughs) so uh yeah wow wow fun facts wow do you do you want do you want the rabbit ears hat i mean it's kind of cool but i don't know i wouldn't want to I devalue Louise's individuality. Oh, I wouldn't have thought that uh, in the moment, but now that you bring it up, that's um, that's an interesting comparison. Yeah, uh, you don't want to know which character is the the same as you, though. I don't think as me. Yeah, F- uh, from Bob's Burgers. Yeah, I don't think you want to know. Is it Tina? No, Gene. Uh, Kara is actually the same as Tina. Oh, interesting. <laughs> INFP for well, those. Well, you got to tell me now. Um, is it Bob? no um what's the name of the the really dopey guy that comes in <laughs> teddy yeah thank you i'm teddy yeah oh no i mean you had to take it all with a grain of salt because i refuse to do <clears throat> any personality test because they're long and boring and i don't like filling out things that are about myself so i offset those duties to hudson so he tells me what personality and that's exactly I am. what an isfp enneagram nine <laughs> green um the, okay. phlegmatic temperament would say temperament i have done yeah. I, I know that i'm green because i filled that out and i'm fucking green baby i have zero and it's green. not easy zero yeah. green hey how many times did we fight growing up oh just all the time and the way that reds and greens are exact opposites and are basically seeking the opposite things out of situations from one another exactly and i literally realized that it was the source of basically every conflict we ever had more or less more or less because i am red choleric with a i'm a 50 50 mix of red choleric and blue melancholic so that's fun Mm. but i mean i could talk about personality types all day and we 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 definitely have an episode about that not I mean, uh, we could film a second episode just talking about podcasts right now, but I'm pretty sure we have to get going. So, uh, thank you for talking with me. Yeah. Um, if you want me to do that bit about my MCU rewrite, I can sum it up in five minutes to get an exact 45. But Next time, uh, we will have to do that. Uh, Hudson, sure. Hudson is... Uh, uh, he uh, he he's he's got very specific thoughts about the MCU and how to change it for the better, and uh, he's made some interesting uh, changes that uh, warrant a, a larger discussion. But uh, yeah, uh, for now, I think uh, thank you for for tuning in, and uh, I want to do another podcast. I don't know what the name of this will be moving forward, but uh, thank you for joining me, and thank you for for listening. Um, I am on Instagram at the handle at Spencer Draws, and uh, I've got uh, comics and stuff that will be posted eventually. Uh, I think my Twitter is also that. Hudson, uh, where where can people find you? Where do you want to send them? Um, well, let's see. I don't have a Twitter. I don't have an Instagram. I'm not hip like the cool kids these days. I have a Facebook, but that Ooh. would be weird. Um, I do have um, a page on the site thegamecrafter.com for my game business party. Um, yes. I fully understand that it is a bit steeper than the average board game, but I can attest to I've ordered two test copies myself. The pieces are very high quality, 
And honestly, if you don't like the rules, I would love the feedback because this is my first board game ever. So try it if it sounds cool and you like Monopoly. And if you don't, that's totally fine because I've got more board games in the mix that I want to make. I'm thinking about taking on Uno next. So ah, so uh, once again, that's uh, Business Party, the board game that is available on game... TheGameCrafter.com. TheGameCrafter.com. Uh, thank you for listening. And next time we will talk about something else. Uh, I will be here because this is my podcast. Uh, uh, Hudson will definitely be here again, but uh, uh, I don't, I, I will, we'll see how this thing shakes out. Uh, budgeting for celebrity guest stars pending. Exactly. Please check back later. Exactly. I, I have Jeff Goldblum on the phone as we speak. Okay, bye. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.